Hey everybody, welcome to Crack Pack Tuesday number 190 on the Mandalik. I'm John as always, and we've got ourselves some more of the Spark Packs now that we're going to crack on open. So if you happen to be new to uh, Crack Pack Tuesday, we don't just open the pack and go, hey, look, I got these cards. We actually talk about this as though this was pack one, pick one in a draft, and what card we would take pack one, pick one. Now every Crack a Pack is sponsored by you, or, or maybe not you, but those of you who are patrons over at patreon.com slash Mandalik at the $5 level or above. You're entered each week to get all the cards out of this pack, uh, or none of the cards if you don't want them, or just the rare or whatever you happen to want. And this week, it's going to go to Stardust KL, so thank you very much for that support. And you can go over there and sign up at the $5 level or above to get your chance to get, uh, get in for these packs. So we're going to crack this open, and we're going to see what's in it. Pack one, pick one. If this was a draft. And this is one of those packs that just falls apart as you touch it. First pack is, or first uh, card is Blind Blast. Blind Blast is two and a red for an instant. Blind Blast deals one damage to target creature. This creature can't block uh, this turn. Draw a card. Some of those words just feel slightly weird. Um, yeah, I, I don't really care for this card. I don't think it's very good in any deck. It's just not really what I want to be doing um, with my, my magic cards. It doesn't do enough. It's expensive. No interest, and certainly not a first pick. Battlefield Promotion is up next. Battlefield Promotion is one and a white for an instant. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. That creature gains first strike until end of turn. You gain two life. This is okay if you are in the green-white proliferate deck. This is a way to get a counter and uh, start that stuff going. First strike is a nice little combat trick for only two mana. Gaining two life, that's a cool upside. This is a trick that I rather enjoy. It's kind of in like my C-plus trick range. That said, it's not a first pick. Up next is Crush Descent. Crush Descent is three and a blue for an instant at common. Counter, target, spell, unless its controller pays a whole two mana, and you get to amass two. I don't like this card. I don't think it's playable. I don't think you should ever play this. Two mana is uh, just not that much of an extra tax. It becomes very difficult for you to actually get somebody with this spell, and you can't even just make the amass two creature. You do have to counter, or at least attempt to counter a spell with this. Uh, I, I, You should never play this card. Certainly not a first pick. Up next is Vampire Opportunist. Vampire Opportunist is one a black for a creature vampire. It's a 2-1. Pay six and a black. Each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Um, if you are super duper duper controlly, this can see you through the end of the game, but this is kind of a, uh, a, a bottom, bottom, bottom tier way to win the game. No real interest in a vampire opportunist, but if it's super late in the pack, I'll pick it up. And if I have a spot, I'll play one, but uh, not a first pick. Up next in this incredibly powerful set of War of the Spark is Steady Aim. One in a green for an instant. Untap target creature, it gets plus one, plus four, and gains reach until end of turn. No real interest in this combat trick. If you uh, need to side it in because your opponent has flyers, you can, but this is like the worst way to deal with a flyer. It doesn't kill them unless you have a creature, and that creature is relevantly sized with the plus one, and it's on the board at the same time, and yada, yada, yada. Um, not a fan of Steady Aim. It's a very, very low-rung sideboard card and not a first pick. Up next is Thunder Drake. I guess Thunder Drake's going to be our first pick so far, and it's not great. Three and a blue for a creature elemental Drake at common. It's a 2-3 flyer, and whenever you cast your second spell each turn, you put a plus one, plus one counter on Thunder Drake. That's actually not that hard to do. I thought it would be harder. Uh, this is a pretty good role player in the uh, the blue-red spells deck, but you can actually play it in basically any blue deck, and getting a counter on it isn't the hardest thing in the world and then of course if you are in many of the blue decks you're going to be proliferating that counter and uh that's how you're going to get the rest of the counters on this this is just just a fine card i never ever want to first pick it it's currently our first pick just because the comments so far have been pretty weak um so we'll keep it in frame but it'll probably fall out before too long up next is Sarkin's Catharsis. Sarkin's Catharsis is four and a red for an instant at common. It deals five damage to target player or planeswalker. It's an instant speed lava axe. I've actually played this. I played it in sealed. I don't think maybe I've played it in draft like once. It's an okay finisher in the blue red spells deck, but there's better cards that you can get. Uh, you shouldn't be stuck playing this card. So uh, not a first pick, not a high pick, and you generally shouldn't play it, but just like Lava Axes, there's some decks where it just kind of works, but you can find better stuff. 
Vraska's finisher is up next. Vraska's finisher is two and a black for a creature Gorgon Assassin at common. It's 3-2. When it enters the battlefield, uh, you get to destroy target creature or planeswalker an opponent controls that was dealt damage this turn. This can get people. Um, this feels a little bit better than Fathom Fleet Cutthroat. I think the fact that it's three mana, whereas I believe Cutthroat was four mana, makes this slightly different. Typically, you're getting a creature with this. It's relatively rare, I think, that you're dealing damage to a Planeswalker and uh, needing this to finish it off. It's an okay card. If I have a spot, I'll play one, but it's certainly not a first pick card here. Our next common is Sahili Silverwing for generic mana for an artifact creature, Drake. It's a 2-3 flyer, and it's got the most pointless rules text on it when it comes into the play you can look at the top card of your opponent's library you don't do anything with it but you can look at it and you know it and they don't for a split second until they draw it um yeah it's a two three flyer for four that's fine but the ability doesn't make this any better and it's not a first pick we have a better two three flyer for four uh, our final common, our final common is Bloomhulk. Bloomhulk is three and a green for a creature, plant elemental. It's a four four, and when it ETBs, it proliferates. Goodbye, Thunder Drake. Ah, uh, yeah, this is a great common. This is uh, there, there's sort of a cycle of pushed commons. Uh, Obnixilus's Cruelty, for example, would be the black one. This card is just great. It's a four four for four, which is already totally fine. I would play that. A fair bit, a fair bit. I like my three threes for three, my four fours for four, and this one proliferates, which of course green is uh, super looking to do in green, white, green, blue, and really any color combination. This card I wouldn't hate first picking, and I believe I already have. Our first uncommon is Gleaming Overseer. Gleaming Overseer is one blue black for a creature zombie wizarded uncommon. It's a one four. When Gleaming Overseer enters the battlefield, you amass one. Your zombie tokens, which probably just means your zombie armies, uh, have hexproof and menace. Those are two very, very good uh, abilities there. This is a card that uh, I've seen played and honestly hasn't felt as oppressive as I was worried about. I've found a lot of ways to deal with the Gleaming Overseer, and once that's turned off, then the army is, you know, free to be targeted by things. The Hexproof is gone. Still a very good card, but being gold, I don't think I'd jump into it. Pack one, pick one. Um, I, I think I'd prefer the Bloom Hulk over the Gleaming Overseer here, so I'm actually not even going to keep it in frame. Ugin's Conjurant is up next. Ugin's Conjurant is X mana for a creature spirit monk it on common. It's a 0-0. Zero, zero. When it ETBs, though, you get X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. If damage would be dealt to the Conjurant, you prevent that damage, and you instead take off that many plus 1 plus 1 counters. So there are some cool things here. Uh, it can't be killed by Death Touch because you prevent the damage. So your 2-2 two, two Death Touch doesn't do any damage. It just takes two counters off, so it doesn't just die. Um, I am still slightly down on this card. I was much more down on it in the set review because I think it shrinks really fast. Sure, you can make it a 6-6 and then your opponent, you know, chumps it with their 4-4 four, four, and you've got a 2-2. Two, two. And then what? And then people say, well, you can proliferate the counters on it. Sure, so my 2-2 two, is now a 3-3. Three, three. Great. Great, we got there. Um, so I'm still not super sold on this card being amazing. Uh, it is still, however, a vanilla creature-ish at any point when you want to cast it. If you need a two drop, it's your two drop. If you need a six drop, it's your six drop. So it's probably fine, and I probably should play it a fair bit more than I do, but I'm not excited by it still. I'm still not taking it over Bloomhawk. Bloomhawk's just better than this card. Uh, so yeah, convince me otherwise, but I'm not taking it over Bloomhawk. Our Planeswalker for the pack, so we're not going to get a rare Planeswalker, is Ashiok Dream Renderer. Dream Renderer. One blue, blue, one black, black, or one blue, black for legendary planeswalker Ashiok. Uh, they start with five loyalty. Their static ability is that spells and abilities your opponent controls that causes... Can't cause their controller to search their library, so flavor text. It really doesn't matter for almost any card in the set. Minus one, however, your opponent puts the top four, four, five, four, four cards of their library into the graveyard, and then they exile their graveyards. Or sorry, target player, not opponent. Um, but the opponent exiles their graveyard. Yeah, Ashiok. I've, people have complained about Ashiok a lot, and I don't think Ashiok's a problem. Uh, if you see it come down, hit it. Like, hit it once, and you're probably completely screwing up your opponent's plans, because Ashiok doesn't even mill you out without bumping, uh, or sorry, bouncing Ashiok, or, or proliferating, or something. Uh, for five loyalty, 
they don't even mill you out. So I actually don't see Ashiok as that much of a threat. Um, if they are so controlling that you can't actually touch Ashiok, you were going to die to anything they had. You were going to die to their flyer. You gonna you were going to die to whatever. So I don't actually think Ashiok's great. I'm not looking to first pick Ashiok, and I'm still not super looking to play Ashiok. I have, and I've won with him. But I'm not looking to play it, and I'm not, I'm not first picking it over a Bloom Hulk. Our rare is Awakening of the Vitugazi. Uh, three green green for an instant at rare. Put nine plus one plus one counters on target land. It becomes a zero zero elemental, but still land and it gains haste. Uh, it's a bomb. It kills you. It kills your opponents out of nowhere. I've heard tell of people returning this with Spellkeeper weird, casting it on the same land and having an 1818 land. Uh, yeah, this card's great and I think is easy, just the easy first pick here. We've got an assassin token as well. So yeah, this pack is relatively easy. We're going to take that Awakening of the V2 Gazi. If it wasn't there, I think I'm just taking Bloom Hulk. I'm sure some people would uh, uh, have Ashiok or Conjurant or Gleaming Overseer as a possibility, but I think I'm just taking Bloom Hulk if the Awakening isn't there, but the Awakening's there, so we're taking that. Let me know in the comments down below what you would have taken. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Twitch. You can find me over at patreon.com slash where, as I said, if you become a $5 donor or above, you can uh, get entered each week, just like Stardust KL, who gets all the cards from this pack, or just the rare, or just whatever she happens to want. As always, you can go over to inkedgaming.com and use the promo code MANALEAK10, all one word. Uh, one zero is the number to get 10% off your order and get something like this uh, fancy playmat here that wouldn't have an ink stain if you bought a new one. Um, and it also helps out the channel. Another way to help out, the, help out the channel is to click that thumbs up button or click subscribe. That's free and easy and does help me out. As always, though, if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time.